Hi, hello, how are you? I'm Alex, if you're new here, then nice to meet you. And if you're coming back, or best friends now, you know how it goes. Today, I'll be talking about my all the books that I read in October and in November, because I didn't do an October reading wrap up, because I only read like four books. So I decided to just put them all together and I've read 11 books over the last two months which is actually a lot considering the fact that I'm in school right now and I'm working so I've been very very busy and that's why I haven't been filming as much and that's why I haven't been putting as much content out there. So today I'll be talking about the good, the bad, and the cozy from October and November. So first we'll start off with the good and I'd like to talk about Less by Andrew Sean Greer. This book was fantastic. I really, really liked it. And as I've said before, if Carly O'Ronnell and Carly didn't recommend this book and rave about it so much, I don't think I would have picked it up. I think I would have judged the book by its cover. But I'm really glad that I did give it a chance because it was fantastic. It definitely is well deserving of the Pulitzer Prize, even though I don't trust the Pulitzer Prize. But this is pretty much about Les, who is an almost 50 year old writer and things things are going slow for him career wise and relationship wise and he's out here struggling. And one day he gets an invitation to his ex-boyfriend's wedding. So not wanting to say yes because it would be awkward, but also not wanting to say no because it would kind of look like defeat, he decides to accept a bunch of invitations around the world for different author and writing meetup convention award thingies. Over a course of a year, Les goes on a trip around the world and he meets all kinds of people from his past life and new friends. You know, he, he really learns to build a relationship with himself and he reflects a lot on his past relationships, not in the way that necessarily shines a light on him as like a victim of his relationships but someone that did hurt but at the same time hurt others and it's it's a really well done self-reflection on how you are in your own relationships and how you might have contributed to the failure of that relationship and how you can grow for the future fantastic i gave it five stars it was so easy to give this five stars it was such a fun read, so well written, such a great story, and I've never related so much to a 50 year old gay man in my life. Next up on the good is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This was great. I did not expect to like it that much. I got, I gave it a 4.5 stars. I think this book is really a hit or a miss for people because a lot of people whose tastes are similar to mine, they didn't enjoy this, they found it boring. Um, which is fine, like, I, I understand that, but I thought this was fantastic. It was such a page turner for me. I read it so quickly, and um, I actually found it in one of those little libraries, and I was kind of excited about it because I heard a lot about this author, and I wanted to check her out, and one of my really good friends, she liked this one a lot, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna give it a chance, and I'm so glad that I did because I thought it was great. I loved the characters. I thought the story was really interesting. It follows the story of a mother and a daughter who move into this very affluent neighborhood and they're renting the house of one of the more rich people living in the neighborhood. The daughter, Pearl, she becomes friends with the children of the landlord of the property that her and her mom rent and the mother Mia she is kind of like their housekeeper. Things take a serious turn you know it was <laughs> it was a very riveting read it was very wild. I understand why there are some people that didn't like it as much um, but I thought it was a fun read and I really liked the writing style so I think it's worth checking out. Next is Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee. This is a memoir and it's about um, this young woman who goes to Taiwan to kind of connect with her roots and connect with her family and better understand um, her family's past. And it's 
gorgeously written. Um, Jessica Lee is a environmental historian, so she has a very well-developed relationship with nature and living things that surround her and landscape. So her descriptions are phenomenal. It, this was one of the most beautiful stories I've ever read just because of the descriptions. And it's a story about nature, it's a story about family, and it's also a story about language. And I really liked how Leek interconnected all of these three elements in her book. I picked this up at a used bookstore, kind of mostly because of the cover, I'm not even going to lie to you guys, but also because it was one of 2021 selections for the CBC Canada Reads Awards, and I find that those books typically are really, really great. I did read one book that just didn't click with me, but usually those on the shortlist for Canada Reads are fantastic books and this was definitely one of them. I don't know if it actually won. I, I don't remember. I don't remember who won the prize. Maybe I should have looked that up. This is great. I, I love this. Definitely check this out, De especially if you like nature, especially if you want to learn more about language and I don't know. I just think Jessica Lee is a phenomenal writer. Okay, then I listened to The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. I haven't read this book, I think, since I was in grade 8 or 9, so I was like 13, 14 years old, and that's like 10 years ago. So it's been a decade since I've read these stories. I don't think I've actually seen the movie for a while either. I might have seen Catching Fire more recently, but it was so much fun to reread this. I know The Hunger Games is very heavy subject matter, and I know that, you know, it's about a dystopian world where there's this totalitarian government, and they have control of the 12 districts, and once a year, every year, they take a boy and a girl from each district to fight in an arena to the death. And in The Hunger Games, as most of you already know, Prim is chosen, and she's a 12-year-old girl. And her sister Katniss, the main character, volunteers as tribute. This book is iconic. It's extremely well written. I liked it a lot better than I expected to. I didn't expect to have that much of a good time reading it, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I actually listened to the audiobook on Libby, and that was really great too. I, I finished it in like two or three days. I absolutely tore through it. It was so much fun and of course that I read Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. I also listened to the audiobook for that even better. Like I knew I would love Catching Fire though because that was the best one out of all three. It wasn't necessarily my favorite. I bounced back between The Hunger Games and Catching Fire being my favorite but I think it's pretty well agreed upon that Catching Fire was the best of the three and it was also so good. I also tore through that and I really liked listening to the audiobook. I'm still deciding whether or not I'm going to read Mockingjay just because it's such a rough book and it's very slow, but I feel like I kind of owe it to the trilogy to finish it. And I'm also working on another video where I talk a little bit more about it, so. Next up on good is Dune Messiah by Frank Herbert. This is fantastic. I liked it better than I liked Dune, to be honest, and I really did like Dune. It's a lot less of world building and character development and more just following Paul Atreides as an adult and as the emperor. You know, I mean, there's a lot of politics and stuff, but it's also about the relationships between people in the story and Paul as a leader. And it's, it's a meditation on Dune and it's, an excellent sci-fi novel. Herbert really has a talent for writing sci-fi, clearly, and I'm very much looking forward to continuing the series. I read Dune in the summer, like back in June I think it was. That was a very thick book, but it was still really good and I did want to continue with the series. It's just when I watched the movie a couple weeks ago with my boyfriend, I was like, oh my god, this is- why is this better than I remember? <laughs> and I was very enthralled by the story all over again, so I went to pick up Dune Messiah, and I finished this very quickly considering that I'm in school right now, 
I finished it in less than two weeks. I mean, it's a lot shorter than Dune is, but it's really, really, really great. It was excellent. The ending brought me so much pain, and I'm still healing from it, um, but I'm really looking forward to reading book three and seeing what happens next. Last but not least on good is When Jack by Joseph Boyden. I read this in the course of one hour. I read it in a single sitting a couple days ago and it was heartbreaking and incredible. The writing in this is so gorgeous. It's very poetic and I don't often use that word because I'm not someone that reads a lot of poetry or enjoys that much poetry, but this was phenomenal and it has some really great illustrations by Kent Monkman. Really beautiful illustrations that pair with the chapters in this book. And it's about an Ojibwe boy that runs away from a residential school. He's nine or ten years old and he's running away towards home. But he doesn't realize how far home really is for him. He's followed by these Manitou who are forest spirits that kind of narrate his story and follow him along his journey back home and comfort him in the end. And it was it was really hard hitting and I'm trying to read more indigenous literature because I think that's important as a Canadian and just read more Canadian literature in general. And I really liked Boyden's writing and I look forward to reading more of his work. Okay, now for the bad, or the, yeah, the bad. Although for this particular book, I would say the ugly, but for the sake of my joke, the bad. That's Perfume by Patrick Seskind. I cannot believe I was fooled into reading this book. <laughs> my mom told me it was bad. She warned me. She said that it was so bad that she tossed it in the recycling bin, so I should have known. But it's about this man that emits no odor, but has a very powerful sense of smell and he becomes this like intern at a perfumery um and he is very talented and he does create the ultimate scent but like this story was introductory for like half of it and then it's like a hundred or so pages of him being a hermit in this cave and like eating salamanders and then it just takes such a turn that I still to this day do not understand. But essentially, he creates a scent that is so powerful and so good that the wearer becomes the most attractive human to everyone that smells the scent. The people are so in love with the wearer that they have to be as close to them as possible. So they start to cannibalize the wearer. The way he created the scent is he murdered like 25 virgins and captured their scent and put it in a bottle and obviously he gets arrested for these murders and he's put on trial and he's meant to be executed but instead of dying hated the same way he was born he decides to die loved so he douses himself in his perfume and is cannibalized by the people and it was just so bad <laughs> I hated it. I hated it so much. I don't recommend this book. I mean, read it if you're dying to read it or whatever. I just really regret reading it and I don't recommend it. I highly do not recommend it. <laughs> Next up for the bad was something I was actually kind of surprised that I ended up giving like two stars on Goodreads and that's White Tiger by Aravind Adiga. So this actually won the Man Booker Prize a couple of years ago. I think it was in 2018. And one of my good friends, she recommended this, like she raved about it, she thought it was great. And I did really enjoy it in the beginning. And I gave it three stars initially, but then I had to bump it down to two because yes, it did make me feel a lot. And yes, I did think about it for a long time after the fact, but I just hated the main character so much. Like he was just such a creepy man. And I understood where he was coming from most of the time, but I think at the end of the day, this book just bugged me. And um, I acknowledge that it's incredibly well written and I understand why people loved it so much and why it is a cult classic. And also this cover is fantastic, but I just don't think it was for me. And yeah, unfortunately I just didn't like it. I just wasn't crazy about it. And now for the cozy. 
I read The Raven Boys by Maggie Stavire. Oh, so good. So good. I It was a reread. I haven't read these books in over a decade. Again, like Catching Fire and The Hunger Games. And I, I listened to the audiobook from Libby and it was just fantastic. I understand why I love these books so much. They're some of the best YA fiction I've ever read, some of the best fantasy I've ever read, period. And um, I'm really excited to continue reading the rest of the series. Currently I'm reading the second book, but The Raven Boys was just so much fun to get back into. And because I hadn't read the series in like years, there was so much that I forgot and there was so much that was kind of a surprise to me and it was it was just nice to reread it and get reacquainted with the story and with the characters. And it was such a cozy read. I read this again in like two days, just like The Hunger Games. And it was just so nice to lay down and, and enjoy the book and I can't wait to finish up the second one and then finally read the third and the fourth because I actually never finished the series and that's why I decided to to start from the beginning because there was just so much that I had forgotten and I I wanted to enjoy the third and the fourth book properly and I felt that warranted a reread. So yeah that was the good and the bad and the cozy um, which I think is hilarious so you should too and I hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to filming more, reading more, engaging with you guys more, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.